Whatever you think now, yeah, it's gone, alright? You put yeah, attention right. to yourself. Just I'm only gonna come and do this once in the game, alright? If I have to come back That's again, fine. it's gonna be a colour of a car. Same one thing. We don't want that, you don't want that. No. Oh, if he's weak, if he's weak, overrule him. Come on, Rangers! Come on, Rangers! He missed the whole game. Oh, nice. The FA Cup is upon us. Long before the football and Premier League sides filled second string squads in their quest to stay in the competition long enough to start taking it seriously, the non-league world is in full FA Cup flow. The very first round took place in August, and six weeks later, the National League South sides find themselves entering the fray, which is why Dorking are heading south to face Burgess Hill Town in the second qualifying round. Three wins in the competition from here will get Dorking into the first round proper, which to non-league clubs offers a financial incentive that could cover their operating costs for the entire season. So no matter what happens at the top level, the FA Cup's allure remains untarnished for any club outside of the Football League. The club Dorking are visiting, Burgess Hill Town, play in the South East Division of the Isthmian League, two divisions below Dorking, and their own cup journey started in the second round of fixtures. A preliminary round win over Bearstead was followed by a victory over Bracknell Town, and today they welcome Mark White's National League South side on a hot September day. And with so much money potentially on offer, Mark is expecting a professional approach from his players against lower league opposition. Come on, motherfuckers. Oh, I forgot an arm at Madison, Luke Moore with Pete Pottage. Having accidentally left two of his players back in the Crawley area, Mark's pre-match routine is not going to plan, and given the recent history between the two clubs, a settled approach to the match is going to be crucial if they're to progress. X marks the spot where Briggsy, we had an incident in a, uh, a lead game one evening down here in the rain, and then Gary Elphick and Briggs went for the same ball, and uh, Briggsy broke his cheekbones on the, on the clip. You can still hear it. But Burgess Hill were two up at the time. I mean, maybe 10, 15 to play, but he was, he was unconscious. Burgess Hill wanted to carry on. They were desperate bottom of the league at the time. He was on the pitch 40 minutes, waiting for an ambulance. They still wanted to carry on. Ref left the whole game, left all the fans in. His mum and dad was on the pitch. Um, it's the most horrific bit of refereeing you'll ever see, but you know, we're never surprised with that. And then um, the game got abandoned in the end. And then a few Burger Hill fans, we have to say, not all of them to be fair, because there's some good people here, but a few of them never forgot. It's the year they got relegated. <laughs> never forgot, because we then played them and beat them um, in the replay. So that's the, that's the bit of history, yeah? <laughs> there's a fucking admin error this morning, mate. It fucking was not, honestly. No, because the coach driver stressed me out, because he turned up 10 minutes late and he forgotten the milk. I was fucking fuming. I was too busy having a row of him and I forgot fucking Pete's potty stop. Right, boys, listen up, only a really quick one now. We're going to go out and have a real loosen off in the shade. Grass is long. That is how we want it today. Smaller pitch, slow it up. That's great for us. Love the fact they've done that. I know when we're on it and we're on it. Don't be drawn into the sunny day mentality. It's the FA Cup. We want to be in the draw on Monday, right, with a home draw. And then you only have a one game away from the big time. OK, so but we'll worry about today. Their best player is a keeper uh, by some way. Do you know the keeper, Sammy? Great player. Where's he from? He's good. Yeah. He's last night, he said. His birthday last night, yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Was he? I'd like, yeah, I love that. I'm going to tell his gaffer in a minute. Maybe I'm a massive bust start in the changing room. It is the FA Cup. There will be shocks on Teletext tonight, as they say, right, there'll be shocks. We won't be part of that, but let's make sure of that. It's a game we should enjoy. Think of those pre-season games against these teams, yeah? They're in the game to so put them out of the game. It's a game we should enjoy, okay? I'm telling you that now, right? We are, I'm telling you, looking good and I'm fucking pleased with us, okay? Right, we need to be out there in, I'll tell you now, because I've got a tight schedule, four minutes, okay? Four minutes. It's a bit of a hectic start with players being delayed. Is that gonna affect anything, do you think? Yeah, sometimes it does. Depends what their mentality is like, do you know what I mean? But to be fair, they was here borderline. It was quite annoying, actually. Some of them were here way too. I don't like arriving too early. I told the driver to slow down, but did he fuck? When we was in the very lower divisions, I mean, we were getting to this stage, winning three, four games a season and, and making good money from it. But it's, if we'd have kept up that same run rate of winning two, three games, we'd have done a few first round proppers by now. Which is obviously the ultimate pinnacle for non-league clubs, do you know what I mean? So. But 
we're certainly just going to take it one at a time. Do you know what I mean? Just beat this lot and, and just see who we draw on Monday. Um, the third round of the FA Cup to non-league teams is effectively like the final for a Premier League team, right? That, that's the first round. The first round proper is, yeah, that's what everyone wants because there's normally about seven allocated TV games. You know, you get a TV game, you'll make 150 grand in the process. Last year, haven't played Marine in the second round proper um, and the winner got drawn against Spurs. You know what I mean? Um, at home. And Marine played uh, with no fans in front of Spurs at home. Incredibly. But that can happen. That, that's always going to happen to somebody every year. What wins out there? Is it your business head? Are you thinking about the money? Or is it yeah. your heart, your love of it? Yeah, no, the, the business part, 100%, because this can pay for your season, Rich. Bottom line is, a good run in this pays for your season. When you do your business models at this level, you don't include any cup money. That's just a bonus. I mean, some clubs might gamble on, you know, getting to a certain stage, um, you know, but you don't put any money in your models. So everything you get from this is the bonus and a good run in this pays for your season. That is, so that has to be absolutely primary thinking for me. So they better fucking win. If anyone's not switched on in the warm up, because it's a nice day, I will swap the team. I've done it in the FA Cup a lot. There is money on it. Obviously, if you was at a casino, and you had to give someone fucking 10 grand to put on black and red, you're going to give it to someone you trust. So I want to make sure that all of you are tuned in. They are probably going to try and play, but they won't be able to at all because of our full press. My thing for us, number one thing in a cup match by a long way is discipline. We take any early yellows, I'll probably get you off. I'm not going to risk 200 grand, 300 grand because you're on a yellow. I'm not going to do that. So, you know, if it's unlucky, I get that, but unlikely I'll risk you. Discipline's got to be brilliant. Ref's shit hot. He's a good ref. And if he ain't great, he's a nice guy. He'll admit he's not great, so he can talk to the bloke, okay? The keeper, he will come for anything. He'll catch everything, and he'll fucking text his mate whilst doing it. He is comfortable as fuck. I've given you the sort of bit I have to give you in terms of, look, be aware, FA Cup, lower opponent, you know, they're still going to run, they're going to be switched on 120%. You know, I need to give you that. It's, a, it's like a fucking health warden on a packet of fags. I've got to tell you that, right? But that's not for one minute me saying anything they do today can harm us. We're in fucking great form. You should be getting yourselves into a mindset of being ready to go and I'll be watching, okay? <laughs> Oi, same as last week. It's the best one of the year by a mile. Bad, same as last week, yeah? This bit. What a strike, now that do you, done in. Grass is a bit longer with the ball on it than I thought, so make sure we're not um, playing into shit little pockets, boys. The game is around the edges, and it's third man runs. This is what I'm looking for, boys, okay, yeah? Business as usual, because we've all been fucking excellent. You've been fucking excellent. Business as usual. Wingers get high. Prior get high. Stretch the game on this pitch, okay? Let's go. <laughs> As the teams prepare for kickoff, Mark realises Burgess Hill Town are lining up with a different formation to the one he expected them to deploy. Oh, fuck me, they're playing two. They're playing two strikers. I forgot, I didn't know they were playing really. That's two strikers. Baz, I'll let you know, it might be two. It doesn't take long for Dorking to settle into their pattern of play. Despite Town's pair of strikers up top, Wanderers are able to move the ball around the back as they are wont to do. Mac is there! Mac is there! Turn around, Mac! Bobby Joe Taylor and Nick Wheeler offer a combined threat down the left-hand side, while Barry Fuller and Niall McManus do the same on the right. Off you go, Baz, off you go! Go back, roll him feet early, roll him early. No! Fuller and McManus combine with Luke Moore to create the first chance of the match for James McShane. 
hung over or otherwise, goalkeeper Taylor Seymour is looking like a safe pair of hands, and his kick is just as long as Mark suggested. From the resulting throw-in, Reese Williams Bowers tees up Pat Harding, but his shot is blocked. want to maintain pressure on Wanderers, but the visitors are too quick for them and they soon retain possession. One on one! Go on, Bass, go on, Bass. Drive, 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 drive! Forward! Forward, Kane! A slick move nearly gets McManus in behind, but Town are saved by an offside flag. Another long kick from Seymour lands deep in the Wanderers' half, and Mark thinks striker Pat Harding is pushing his luck. Back in him! He's back in him! That's a fucking cheat! Ref, intentional obstruction. That's what it is. Ref, so that's a yeah? You know the regulations, not more than... Well, you've, you've missed over then. Conversely, Wanderers keeper Slav Huck is playing his kick short, although Mark still expects them to get the ball forwards with haste. Get us up! Get us up! Bass, get us up! Forward, Mac is there! Mac is there! Keep it moving, keep it moving, Bass. Town are struggling to get near Wanderers, and midfielder Geordie and Dozid is forced to drag Luke Moore back. Mark insists on Taylor trying a shot, but his effort flies over. Fucking wank. An impromptu game of head tennis soon results in another free kick, but Mark's players are not keeping the game flowing, much to his frustration. Do it early! Play! A scramble in front of the dugout ends with goalkeeper coach Tony taking a ball to the face. Try it easy. Matt, no! Oh, yeah. Didn't time. even flinch. You alright, Tone? Bad look, but bad look at him tucking in. Happy days. Get, get it back. Kane! This side! Off you go, Baz. Take him away, take him away. Third man! Kane, Kane, it ain't there. Towns defending is no more convincing than Pete Townsend's it was for research defence. But Dorking, like someone who skipped grammar lessons at school, aren't capitalising. If one of them situations where we'll have so much of the ball and they're switching off. Take them away, go on, go on, go on! Fuller is consistently finding McManus down the right-hand side and the winger is terrorising young fullback Reggie Ward. Just as the pressure seems to be reaching a crescendo, Towner let off the hook by an offside flag that Mark has no respect for. It's fucking off him, ref! Ref! That is basic! That is fucking basic! Whatever you think now, yeah, it's gone, alright? You pay attention to yourself. Just, I'm only gonna come and do this once so. in the game, alright? If I have to come back that's again, so. it's gonna be a colour of a car. Same one thing. We don't want that, you don't want that. Enough. All I'm saying, if he's weak, if he's weak, overrule him. Whether or not the offside call was correct is pretty much irrelevant, for Burgess Hill still can't get out of their own box. Pryor, McManus, Moore and Josh Taylor are tapping on the back line as if it were a Terry's chocolate orange, hoping to get their hands on a slice. Sooner or later, they're just going to have to bite into it. <laughs> Running onto a loose ball, Luke Moore fires into the top corner to make it 1-0. Buzz! Buzz! Let's go! Dorking wants to put the game to bed early, like the time I had to sleep at my friend Oliver Jago's house. The sun was still up and I cried until they let me go home. Shoot, Bobby! Shoot, Bobby! Shoot! 
Don't mind that, after it's a good goal, you'd want it, that's what you want to do, frighten them. With the game seemingly under control, midfield maestro Kane Wills is uncharacteristically ponderous on the ball, and it costs him. Kane, if you get it back, have a picture. Have it now, have a picture. Wills is given a yellow card, knowing that Mark won't risk a midfielder on a booking in the FA Cup. He's, he's off after time, getting second goal, he's off half time. With half-time approaching, Dorking are still working on getting a second goal, leading to Jason Pry getting his best chance of the match so far. Fucking took my how many chances is that man? James McShane's deep cross leads to Pry's next opportunity, which while being harder, is potentially far more spectacular. Now McManus is refusing to give Reggie Ward a break, and he gives Jason his third good opening. Some incisive work from Geordie and Dozid earns him a glimmer of an opening, and a Lazaro Lasso Schaller impersonation. Bobby Joe Taylor delivers the last chance of the half, and once again it's talisman Jason Pryor on the end of it. I mean, what is that hole in the net or something around there? Oh, Lino, all you've done is say two sit down, three sit down, everything else has been bollocks. You're letting this Lino have the shittest game of his life. Okay, just remember what we said. That Lino and the ref, okay, I've told you I don't fucking have things. I told you I don't want it to be our default setting up a bunch of mugs every week. But the rest fucking got all over the shop, and the lino this side is having a fucking mare. You need to be literally next decision around this ref and this lino like flies around shit, going, you need to fucking get with the game. Okay? Because it just encourages the behaviour. Listen, I'm, I was doing Keely, we're not. Will see I'm doing you because of the booking. Simple as that. Cup football, we've got to do everything right. Gallagher, you're going on, which will help with this whole aerial shit, blocks and all that shit as well. We're not compacting midfield, and the reason is because we're trying to get too many midfielders on the ball. So we're like this. And then we're isolating, then we're like this. And at one nil up, competition football, this is not where you need to play this match today. In order to go and score five goals, literally, and obviously we could have had a few, but that's okay. Stretch, Macker in the pockets. We want to try and get the ball with the winger. Now gets it. What he wants is little sets coming across here. Coming across here, joining in, joining in, compact, compact shape. It's a cup game. We could have been out of sight, we're not, right? And as the game goes on, if they're chasing an equaliser for a replay, they will chase, chase, chase. We have got to be compact, right? Two midfielders, take them away, okay, when you need to. Help the ball transfer when we get into wingers, like we do, okay? And when we do get into wingers, we'll be on the halfway line, Baz. We'll be on the halfway line here, okay? And we're going to contain them in their fucking half. When they go long and they're pinning, full bats get round, work out, if Ed's gonna win them, Dan, drop off, whatever you need to do, you lot can work that out, okay? All right, boys, come on, lads, come on. You don't, Dan's there to roadblock, he's not there to pass the ball. So get him off the ball. You, you, it's literally round the edge, he's forward early, Dan just fills in holes, defensively we're compact, okay? All right, Bobby, Dan's not there to play football, he's there to be a roadblock. Your job is just to go forward early or little, little macker bits in the 10 dog, okay? Right, don't, don't make sure Dan don't start seeing loads of the ball because of the game, he'll see loads of the ball. He don't, he don't want the ball, Dan, he's not interested. He would tell you he don't want it. Do you know what I'm saying? The second half continues as the first ended with the dorking wide men tooling with the soles of the Burgess Hill fullbacks. All Josh Spinks can do is pull Nick Wheeler back and hope he gets away with it, which he does. Yes, yes! Noel McManus bursts into the box and he gets the same response from the referee. Obviously it's difficult here, very difficult. Jason's very experienced. This Nick Jimmy tears his guy apart, but Nicky is anyway. Take him on. Take him on! Just as Mark and the coaching team are figuring out how to shuffle the pack, Nick Wheeler forces a save from the birthday boy. Well, oh, compact, compact, well done, you're having a great half. Well done. Where are you going? No, come on! Forward! Mark badly wants his team on the front foot and objects to using goalkeeper Slav to bounce the ball off. Go on, Sam, well done, Bob. 
When Town moves the ball high up the pitch, Taylor gives the manager what he wants. Off you go! On your own, Bobby! Give it to Bobby! On your own! On your own! On your own! With the fullbacks incapable of stopping him, Taylor's surging run ends with a low drive that dips under the keeper's hands to make it 2-0. Dan, don't worry about it. Listen to me. Uh, that, that, it starts with us going back to Slav. It all started because we went back to Slav. We don't need to touch it. We don't need the ball. Town are struggling to keep it together. Having scored the second, Taylor looks to set up the third. Ed Harris shows the right stuff to jackknife across his defender and milk money the ball into the goal. And we finally seem to have exhausted all of our Ed Harris references. On your own! Substitute Callum Keeley is keen to get on the score sheet. Line out! Line out! Line out! He can't even fucking hear ref. That's how bad he is. Fucking, can't talk. Is that man well out of fucking 40 towers? Ref. Get him off. Jimmy, come on. Boys, that Jimmy on the ball. Mark fails in his bid to get the linesman subbed, but he has brought on Jimmy Mewitt, who, thanks to Callum Keeley's hold-up play, gets a half chance. At least until Marvin Hamilton makes an excellent tackle. Mewitz gets another chance to impress. But this time his drive is deflected onto the post. Bobby! Bobby, hang it for Dan! Dan! Gallagher, attack the ball! With seconds left on the clock, Mark dictates the final set play of the day. Yes, Another assist. Literally. Literally will fucking do. Well done, Ed. Good goal. We're going in. Cheers, Kate, for play, mate. All the best for your season. Cheers, mate. Boys, really good second half. Very important. Back four especially. That's why the keepers last three minutes here and they, they get bombed and all that. Because you have to have great pictures like, of what, what, how we're trying to play before the game. It's really important. Second half, first 25 or 20, we're planning their half. We're playing in their half because we're taking one sideways or backwards pass less. So important because teams want you to take an extra pass that's not necessary. The only time you play sideways or backwards is when you're trying to change the dimension of the pattern. <coughs> not because you've not thought about your first pass. I think this week at training we'll work a little bit more on playing from the opposition's half because when you do that, you're so good. It's a joke. You're so good. When we play the extra pass back, we've done it. When we, got, when we went 3-0 up, we, we relaxed a bit more. We started playing the extra pass again. And that's when we, we go back to Slav. And that's when Dan has a bit of a moment. All starts just going home. Because it's basic football. You go home, they press one higher. Basic football. Basic football. The next, next bloke will get the balls under a bit more pressure. End of. Don't want to do it. I want to just get used to going right. And Baz done it brilliantly last 20, under pressure. Niles' feet. Niles' feet under pressure ain't a bad out ball. The second half, the first 20 was exactly what he asked you to do at half time. So fair play. We're compacting midfield, winning seconds, playing in high areas, right? And that's why we opened them up when we did. We was always going to. All right, so we're on a good spell now. We're on a great spell. I'm really pleased with you. Really pleased. It's the clean sheet we wanted. Don't matter what they're like. They didn't have one shot on target. So I'm really pleased with you. And the pitch weren't easy to play. I won't go tell you that at the start, but it weren't easy with long grass, etc. Okay, so well done. In the hat Monday, right? In the hat Monday, that's what matters, okay, yeah? Simple as that. Now, boys, well done. Get yourself stretched off. Well done. This is, this is it, Pry. Jase, this is our year. Boys, by the way, they've got a load of food. They've, got, they've done you a load of food, so make sure you go and get it, okay? If anyone wants to warm down, up to you. Yeah, basically, mate. SAS job in, in and out and get it done. Made, made heavy weather first half, I thought. I think. Yeah, yeah, for, we, we had um, 
Some really good chances at, at 1 0. Prior, Jason's obviously not played for a couple of weeks, missed a couple of really great chances. I think if we go, if we go sort of 2 3 0 up in the first half hour, it's a really long day. Um, but no, we, we've done enough, mate. Uh, I'm John Rattle, I'm the director of Burgess Hill Town Football Club. How long have you been involved with the club? Uh, I think I've been here now, I think this is my 10th season. We've had lots of good times here. Uh, I think, you know, we've, since we've been here, you know, we've got a lot to thank our chairman, Kevin Newell, who I'm standing in for. Uh, but Kevin's been with the club 15 years. Uh, we try and be a friendly club. We, you know, we put a lot of time, it's run by volunteers. It's got, it, I think it ticks a lot of boxes when it comes to non-league football. So you're watching the draw on Monday and you're just praying for the easiest possible? Easiest possible at home, hopefully against a team that's really bad, um, having the biggest bit of luck ever to be at this stage. Um, it's just about getting to that holy grail, mate, of the first round proper. So we've never been there. And I just think the club deserves it because it deserves the profile it can give the club because to be in that situation, and I think also we'd win that game. I think if we got there, I think we'd be so dangerous. Um, so I think the club, that you know, the exposure would give us would be brilliant. And, and I'd love to get, you know, between us and your four viewers, Rich, I'd love, I'd love to get um, 3,000 into Medibank because see, there's only a few things in football that can really grow the club and an FA Cup run is the number one thing. But uh, yeah, you know, one thing we've not done is here as a football club, and I don't know if Dawkins, I know Dawkins Wanderers have never done it, we've never got into the first round proper. So whenever we, we, we start getting into the rounds, I think, you know, Kevin, Newell, the chairman and myself, I think one thing we want to deliver for the football club and the community is to be in that first round draw and be in the hat with some professional sides. You can't plan on X amount of money coming into your club via FA Cup or FA Trophy. You know, it's a bonus. Uh, you know, we, we, we sit down, we budget for the year, and obviously we know that we'll get a good crowd in here today, which we did, uh, but certainly the prize money is never budgeted into uh, the end game as such. Yes, it'll help you financially, but you get people into your ground that, li that like football, but that have never been to non-league, and they're there because the town are in that situation and then you can retain them and you can build on that. And that's why these clubs, you know, that have been around 100 years and they've had all these runs and stuff like that, that is why they build a fan base, because they have great moments and they retain people. And as a, as a businessman, if you like, I'm aware of that. You know, how are we going to hook people into our club? Well, we want to be on BBC Football Focus, we want to have the cameras down for a cup game, and I know that people have come back and watch us, because they maybe don't realise how good we are. So, you know, at this stage, we're two, two games, two games from that, and it's a team, this team could win four games, let alone two. So, it'll be interesting. We bring you these videos free of charge, and all we're going to ask for in return is for you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment. We read every single comment because they come through to our emails and we don't know how to make them stop. Stephen Hanby gave us comments of the week this week. He said, please don't stop making these videos, you've got gold. We promise we'll never stop as long as you're watching, Stephen.